What's up, YouTube, and welcome to Jace Heimerdinger, a bit of an arcane-inspired uh, student mentor type of deck. And this can be played with a lot of secondary regions. Uh, Shadow Isles has been popular recently. I've also already done a video on it. But this time I'm going to play it with Bandit City. The main payoffs, of course, being Minimorph as a very good removal card in the current meta, because a lot of people are playing Victor type of decks, Ambush type of decks, Neandroid, Elusive burn decks with one big hitter. Um, Minimorph is also very good against Pantheon and Fated decks in general. So anything that tries to stack a lot of buffs onto just one unit, a Fizz Papercraft Dragon and so on, we're also seeing a resurgence of. At the same time, we can also play Wallop Bandit City. So lots of ways of dealing with those big single units. Pokey Stick for smaller units, as well as draw card generation and Conchologist, of course, doing the notorious thing and also just giving a bunch of value. But the PNZ package and the PNZ core is what makes this deck really interesting, of course. Uh, it's kind of based around a Tex and a Hextech handler specifically. Grant tech allies everywhere, plus one, plus one. Once you've cast a six plus cost spell this game. So an ideal opening in a lot of matchups is going to be past turn one, past turn two. So we have three spell mana banked. On turn three, we can play either production search or assembly line, sometimes even a shock blast as removal to fulfill that condition immediately and ideally build a board or deal with our opponent's board at the same time. Then on turn four, we can just follow up with Hextech Handler. If we already played Production Surge before, all of those units get plus one, plus one. Pretty insane tempo. Another cute synergy here is uh, sometimes if we play an Adaptertron on an early turn and we delay the whole combo, but then we play Production Surge later on, the Adapter Trunk gets all of the keywords and then reshares them back onto the summon bots immediately. So Adapter Trunk can become one of the carries, the backline engines in this deck, especially if you manage to get an elusive keyword onto Adapter Trunk. All of the subsequent techs, all of the bots that will get summoned, will also share that elusive keyword, of course. So that's going to be a great way of closing out games or finishing out games. And uh, besides that, Ferris Financier, great early blocker that gives us a late game win condition. Very synergistic with both Heimerdinger and Jace who want those expensive spells. Uh, Forge of Tomorrow, I think, needs no explanation. Just great mana efficiency in this deck. Uh, the champions themselves, I think, don't really need explanation neither. Acceleration Gate is super synergistic with filling your board quite easily with all of those bots. And Heimerdinger, of course, is pretty easy to level now that Production Surge and Hextech Handler also count towards his level up. And at the same time, the bots are so much stronger if you have had Hextech Handlers in play before that, or if you share keywords through Adaptatron. Besides that, uh, Assembly Line I already kind of mentioned, as well as Shock Blast, as well board building tools, as well as blockers removal as well as burn especially if we have jace on the board this can be six damage to our opponent's face very potent finisher um i like a one of progress day as a potential refilling tool it's not necessary some people play an albus ferris treasure trash you could play for the memes some people like some hidden pathways to keep up with draw but i think progress day is pretty fine and it's also absolutely bonkers if you double cast it through jace i think that explains all of the deck it is very fun to play because it is so flexible and there are a lot of tech choices well, i've seen a lot of let's play triple production surge or triple adapter tron or triple forge uh, feel free to try stuff out to your liking i'm not saying this is optimally refined and i'll be honest it might take a little bit of time until you understand all of the interactions in this deck between all of the tech synergies and so on and especially how much mana you need to bank to keep open for certain removal cards for certain setups for certain lethal finishes and so on but once you understand the deck and the tons of ways that you can play with this i do think it's very rewarding and it does allow for a lot of skill expression and it's very fun as always i have a bunch of really neat gameplay examples for you enjoy is it the moustache who knows mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i see I see what's going on here. Mm, progress day might be a keep. Let's get to work.
Mhm, mhm. One Forge Chief and four Axes. Interesting. Turret or draw? Like, this is also a turret technically. Not entirely free though. Let's go flash. Give me a Heimerdinger? That's interesting. I think we just go straight progress day. The issue with flash into progress day is we mill one card. And our opponent can mini morph in between. Same for production search. If I would have gone Flash of Brilliance first, we would have overdrawn a card, a discounted card, and we really don't want that. I will have lost T-Rex or card. I think I would have lost a uh, card, right? I think bot comes first. Not 100% sure, though. Could swing with this. Whatever my opponent's blocks, I have a beam. It's not really a high-value beam, though. Eh. I might have to mini morph Jace. Don't really want to let him flip here and give acceleration gate. I think Rex was on the very right. Well, that makes the line even worse then, but I'm not quite sure. Let's get started. Same here, right? If I flash of brilliance, wait, flash of brilliance, mini morph, that actually works. Five. No, we do mill one, right? Tempted to block and mini morph Jace on the left. Forces our opponent to have two removal spells instead of just one. I think it's fine. One Jace spell, but then they still lose the handler. Like, I definitely want to block the handler, so I e either lose one unit guaranteed or at least get a good chance to trade well on one side here. Unfortunate. Okay, all the bulky sticks are out, I suppose. <laughs> we have some serious hand space issues. Could replay Heimer. Kind of like chasing up, up here though. Big like chase handler. What's 
That's fine. I'm inclined to go Quake Attack, although if I go Challenger, I threaten my opponent to not be able to play Drone Champs. Let's go Challenger. We kind of already outvalue, so we should go for board control, I think. Fair. Which means we successfully caught up in tempo. Oh, these are all interesting. I'm tempted to go Counterfeit on Heimer. Like, all three are not bad. But, like, Counterfeit should ensure that we never get outvalued. And it also doesn't look like we get out tempoed. Trail is Sigma. Trail is actually the second best. I think Trail would have been better than Group Shot. The sad thing is we can't get a turret off of the counterfeit, makes, which makes it very low tempo, but insane long-term value, right? Not sure if it's pass or adapted run here, and both are fine. Chase Hammer and Mirror's Resident Sleeper. I mean, we're close to our explosive swing turns. I think we welcome the pass. Like we can't really lose with the hand we have, right? And now the fun begins. Could try Jay's Acceleration Gate on this turn, actually. Force our opponent to play defensively. Morph. Our opponent used how many? One mini morph. It's the best mini morph we'll ever get. I think there's no reason not to do it. Flash? Why are you so greedy for flash? We're waiting for flash until we have Heimer on the board to get a free uh, turret. If they replay Heimer, we can beam. This might also be pass and round. Ooh, search for an 8 8. I'm a bit surprised. Could play Heimer here. Could play Jay's pick off the Adaptatron. I like Heimer. Opponent has mini morph priority, but can't do much. Like a snap mini morph before opponent accelerates. Beam for ten. Is it beam? Clearly outvalues. No, he's down to five cards in hand plus one acceleration gate. He's not outvaluing Heimerdinger. Too many chases. I mean, Thermal Beam does the same thing. We're not really using the mana for the rest of this turn, right? Pokey Stick doesn't have a target. The thing is, it's better to keep Mini Morph for Heimerdinger because um, we can make we can guarantee our opponent to not get any turret. Okay, I guess we lose a. Huh? It's fine. It's it's very peculiar that our opponent didn't insta mini morph. Because if we would have mini morph, we would have gotten the turret for free. Also weird to only swing with this, but I can't complain. Tomorrow. 
Your opponent just double mini morph? Yeah, like a true gangster. Okay, very symmetrical game so far. I could get a 7 to elusive turret. It's vulnerable to mystic shot, but it gives adapted run elusive. I think I like it. This mirror is kind of fun though. It, it is a true big brain mirror, not just because there's two <laughs> giga brain scientists in each player's deck, but it's pretty strategic. So our opponent's gonna try acceleration gate this turn, right? That's a pokey stick. Then probably blocks and refill. Watch your Pretty useless draws, that's unfortunate. Could beam. I like beam. It's way we open attack, opponent reacts, we mystic shot before uh, opponent gets turrets. I could have also not beamed and kept the, like, just open mini morphheimer, I suppose. Ah, too bad we didn't find Handler or anything like that. Acceleration Gate is interesting as well. Didn't find anything that generates bots. Hmm. Feels like Acceleration Gate is good though, right? We do give our opponent a chance to play Elusive Turrets. Nah, no, let's open. Double T-Hex, Giga Chad. So what do they have left? One Jace, one Heimer. A Jace and Floron, thank you for the raid. Isn't it a bit early to end the stream? Appreciate it though, thank you. Uh, we could start go going burn here. I don't think we need to. Keep in mind we still have five Heimer dingers in deck or six. Wallop. we mini our own units i mean that's okay i guess we saw all three pokey sticks we could have minied our own unit but if they have any type of other fast speed spell it's a really bad play like we should always win the long game there's no reason to go too crazy all of the bots from Heimerdinger are now gonna have Elusive. Guess we just double wall up this turn. Opponent still has a bunch of discounted stuff. 
But it's surely not Jace that would have been played before Acceleration Gate. Like, don't get me wrong, Chad. Minimorphing our own unit would have been a cute play, but I think it's not, like, the, the best play if we try to win the game. Because if our opponent does have any type of answer, the punish is huge. Double Wallop or Single? Single is enough, technically. I think we only use... Ah, oh, we can use both. Both give turrets, right? I also want to play Handler. Ah, let's play one for now. Shark Blast? We don't have a Shark Blast in hand. It's fine, Heimerdinger did his job, we don't need him anymore. I think we can Acceleration Gate, actually. And then again, can our opponent stop lethal? Probably not. you wall up for a 5-3 elusive. Well, if we open attack the next turn anyway, um, we only have mana to play either Handler or the, uh, the the elusive bot. Well, the fearsome bot that gets elusive. And Handler is better overall. If we would develop, then yes. The extra wall up is really good for the extra turret. Well, only double wall up stops Lethal here, right? Ooh, okay. That's overprotective, I dare say. Set up blockers. Yeah, we don't really need this. If it's a people problem, I'm your man. Is it otherwise he dies to Shark Blast? That's also true, yeah. Maybe the double wall up is fine. But then our opponent, yeah, might be a doomed situation for them either way, right? They kind of have to win this turn, assuming they can't stop another elusive attack. Lines to block here. Place a bit into Shock Blast. Ah, we can go down to f what 13, that's fine. Oh, we have Production Search in hand actually. Let's take this block so we have more space for more bots. In that case, I also could block. Handler actually. Uh. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Not playing trash. You know what? For the content. Oh, Dragon's Room! And some people just have no taste in their life. Come on, at least let... Let people have some fun. What is the snap conceit? The 
disappointing. Okay, now I'm uh, curious. I feel like this should be a decent matchup for us. I maybe want a Shock Blast on turn 3. Oh, actually, Beam 4... 6 is pretty good here. Adaptatron Handler. Shock Blast better, because we can poke her later on, keep the Beam for a victory. We'll give our opponent another Shard, though. Ah, oh, let's play Beam. Can't really pull too much useful stuff here, right? It's fine. I feel like Beam's better than Peacemaker, though. Protect uh, the Nexus HP. Okay, two fragments on our opponent's side. Lead with a handler. That's a perfect thermal beam. Do we bluff swing? Or is our opponent gonna YOLO? Kinda like playing Forge Chief and swinging with her. Force is a somewhat awkward block from our opponent. What's the motive? We up trade still get the mana thermal beam here. Oh, discarded a fragment. So Blade of the Exile is much less scary now. No, what do I do? Iterate Handler is kind of fun. Could get my own Poro Cannon. Poro Cannon might be best here. I kind of only lose to elusive stuff. Let us take a peek at life beneath the wave. Or while well, the 14 burn, of course. I guess this is like a true shot barrage or no balls kind of case. Do we want to kick mini more if I don't think we want to? Ooh. If we want to set up lethal, Heimer is actually not good. And I seem to be out of units, right?
I think we want to go maximum pressure because our opponent's hand is either full burn, which is only scary if we if they get to play all the burn. But if we do this, we force them to use burn on our units, right? I feel like playing Poro Cannon is too greedy. Okay, so double Shock Blast wins next turn. Single Shock Blast wins, actually. Uh, goodbye. see a cami deck lore rank one ink all right let's gatekeep wallop is good mm. mystic shot's probably good Bad we don't have thermal beam here. If it's a people problem, I'm your man. Oh, we'll go down to ten HP. much we can do about it. Oh, I could have walloped. Can still wallop. I think I prefer letting this go through and going uh, Shark Blast next round though. Like production surge this turn, Shark Blast next turn. since 95. We played a non-financier card to kind of keep our opponent guessing. Mm -hmm, was to be expected.
can chase block now for free. No, our opponent still gets um, the pokey stick. That's such a nasty draw. An ironic Trusha Barrage. Does Jace pull? I don't even mind pulling the 4-3. And Ron's also decent though. Ronin's definitely gonna be inclined to develop. Don't have to, but they'll be inclined to. Chant wins. Like, that would be a perfect freaking hand. If they have it, they have it. I think we won. Assembly line into an uh, acceleration gate should just win. Oh, it doesn't double cast acceleration gate anymore. Still the best line, right? Replicating the power spike. Little help. Have you ever taken Hextech Anomaly just to see what would happen? Earlier on, I picked Hextech Anomaly, and it was actually a good choice. It ended up paying off. Darius has to block, right? I think the, the correct block might have actually been to block the 4-2, like knowing my deck plays thermal beams. That's a tough line to see though, but if your name is lore rank 1 ink, then you should maybe consider it. Yeah, um, this can only either be Troll Chant or thing. Conquer the Stress Defense? No, we just killed Arius here. If it's Troll Chant, we still live on three. If it's like Decisive Maneuver or Whirling Death, we remove Darius.
G to the G. Now that's what I call progress. Mm hmm. I think that's one of the matchups that I want to see. So wallop does a keep. Mm, this stick shot doesn't really hit much. Could go assembly line into handler. In that case, I probably want to keep Mystic Shot though. Could kick it, look for Mini Morph and Thermal Beam, but. Okay. Or we could have kicked everything except for Wallop, look for one drops and more tempo instead of our own setup here. It's all fine. Before I smack ya. Bluff Thermo Beam. I don't think it'll work. Also bluff Jace Challenger, I suppose. Maybe it will work. Nope, opponent don't give a... Don't give a damn. Sharplast is probably better here. There's nothing too scary our opponent can replay at 3 mana. I mean, bot is one of the key cards to remove in this matchup. Like, they can play in the Android, but not, no follow-up. I'm surprised their opponent took the block with Victor. Okay. These are not scary as long as our opponent doesn't... Like, as long as they don't activate Augment anywhere. Deja vu. Didn't this happen recently? For OTK with Daring Poros. How do you OTK with Daring Poros? Teach me, Senpai. <laughs> We're not playing against Yordis in arms. Have I tried out buffed Victor? Yeah, I already posted a video on it. Victor Ephelios. The two buffed. Buffed growth. No, oh, they're desperate. Remove it. That works. I'm tempted to generate Nyandroid. So expensive though, I think it's just fumes. Like my opponent is in burn slash lethal mode, I'm pretty sure. They open attack. How do we approach them? Oof. I mean, I guess I just use 8 mana here to remove 3. Can't really try to win next turn. 
Timer Dinger. Mystic. Hmm. Time for that five mana new removal card. Ooh. Wait, I didn't even consider it. What if we play it as a one off in this deck? Could be spicy. Ah, uh, it doesn't really synergize with Jace though. I think it's just Surge. It's probably gonna force our opponent to block. Mm. When will I find peace? Not the best roll, but could have been worse. Okay, so our opponent won't get Blade of the Exile because they discarded some fragment earlier on. They were main decking for Chief. Okay. Overwhelm Fragment. Okay. That was odd. They could have blocked 1 1 into the 6 2, and Riven could have killed the Fearsome. Better safe than sorry. They're out of shock blast range. It would have been the same amount of um, damage going through though. They just would have killed an additional unit. Right, the hand read was kind of correct. Good thing we played so defensively. GG. Pirate burn. Pretty good hand. I think we even keep assembly line in this case. I've been down in the dumps. I just got down to the dumps. We climb back out of the dumps very quickly. Don't even worry. Remember, we're the ones who make progress happen. We're working here. We're working here. That's cheating. The thing is, I really need the hit so I can assembly line next turn, but then I hmm, can't really deal with a flight. Could just be double mystic shot instead. I mean, it probably is double mystic shot, right? I don't think they play a two drop with three HP. Well, maybe demo, but no target. It doesn't make sense. Some 
clean removal, but now we don't have a play for next turn. Gotta hope for a top kick. Not it. In hindsight, I'm not sure if that was the line. Mm, I guess we're out valuing very effectively. Ooh, good top deck. Results orientation. At its finest. I'm surprised their opponent opened attack. Then again, we do have 5 plus 3 mana. Kind of makes sense, but they're really not pushing much damage. Why didn't I play the 1 mana 2 1 and conserve mana? We. Well, the 2 1 is technically free, right? It's a 0 mana unit as long as it gets a, the strike off. Since it's an aggro matchup, the most valuable resource here is our Nexus HP. What's up, Nick? Thank you for the big raid. Hope you had a good stream. Uh, we are currently revisiting the concept of Heimerdinger, Bandle City, Jace. Because of the access to mini morphs and wallops, and optionally stress defenses. Um... And the meta is super infested with big, like, elusive units, right? Victors, Neandroids, <laughs> Ambush Vice, those kinds of shenanigans. Oh, what a high roy. What a freaking high roy. It's more useful to remove small units in aggro matchups. Well, if you're the control deck and you don't main deck healing, your only goal is to take as little... Like, you try to out-grind your opponent, you try to make them run out of cards while taking as little Nexus damage as possible. And I would say we have very successfully done so, because now our opponent has to top deck a bunch of ridiculous cards to stay in the game. Progress. Should win next turn. Cut a Handler for Rocket Barrage. Handler is one of the best cards. Like, I would play five, six, seven copies of Handler. I would probably play seven copies of Handler if I could. And I'd go triple surge, triple assembly line. You can cut something else for Rocket Barrage, but not a Handler, that's for sure. Um, double poke. We win. It's too late, Mr. Gangplank. I'm not scared of you anymore. Nothing else feels like it makes sense to cut on the list. You can, like, the Conchologists are definitely flex spots. Hey, let's go. We're doing quite nicely against all of these aggro and tempo decks, though, I'm not gonna lie. 